tell Vanny that it's as I suspected, foiled by my own renown. Again. Intolerable. Well, there's no use dwelling on it. Did you find anything else? A key? Yes, that might come in handy. Can I just say how refreshing it is to find competent allies? <laughs> A rare luxury, I assure you. We have unfinished business, mortal. The encoded message you recovered from the bathhouse. That may be the key to determining the waking flame's next move and revealing the secrets I'm searching for. We must find someone who can decipher it. Oko, oko. The masked mortal has the right idea. Fargrave sits on the threshold to everywhere. If there exists a being who can decipher this code, we will find them here. I'd prefer it if we could find someone other than Madame Wim to deal with, however. I have heard of the infamous Mazkin who calls herself Madame Wim. I find her practice of turning gossip into profit to be loathsome. But even a filthy daydread has its uses, I suppose. Take the note to her and pay whatever it costs for a translation. Go to Madame Wim's establishment, the House of Wims. Show her the encoded note and tell her we need it deciphered. I will meet you there. To make sure we have her undivided attention and that she understands this is more than a mortal's request. We know of each other. Perhaps our paths have crossed over the millennia. Perhaps not. Wim has changed her name and appearance multiple times. Or so I've heard. I have no doubt she will do so again when Fargrave no longer amuses her. You saw what I saw when we first encountered Sister Seldina at the Waking Flame Conclave. Her infernal device can transform Daedra into incarnates, living disasters of immense mm. power. Talim, learn, so you should hope I learn everything I can. We learned that Sister Seldina tried to use the votive runes to steal power from the mortals. Power she hoped would destroy the Daedra and allow her to conquer Fargrave. We stopped that plot. But this realm's many portals are too enticing to ignore. They are persistent, if nothing else, these Daganists. If they truly want to unleash their incarnates on Nern, using Fargrave's portals makes the most sense. The hope, slender though it may be, is that the encoded note will tell us more. I'll meet you at the House of Winds. I can help with the negotiations. Mortal, you seem more capable than most. The grasp of the stricture has a task that you may be able to assist with. The apprehension of mortal criminals. I understand your kind enjoys material gain. I can pay you for your help. A band of mortal thieves tried to steal a large quantity of the drug known as Red Maiden. When I attempted to apprehend them, they ran to the plaza of portals and fled into the sever. You must search the server for these criminals and bring them back to me. Their leader's name is Vark. He went through the portal last, and therefore should be easy to find. He is a cunning mortal, but he and the others cannot have gotten far. Return the criminals to Fargrave once you have apprehended them. I find it hard to believe a mortal such as yourself is ignorant of <laughs> such a substance. Your kind are always scrabbling for it. Red Maiden is a drug. When regularly ingested, it can anchor a mortal to Fargrave just as a pact with a Daedra would do. Ah. To prevent a sickness called the Drain, your mortal minds are not meant for the complexities of Fargrave. Occasionally, mortals experience decay. Some become violent, others begin to drool. Ultimately, they will succumb to it and die. Red Maiden is a rare commodity and difficult to produce. Mortals would tear each other apart for it if it was not strictly regulated. 
Not every mortal contracts the drain, but many fear the very possibility and will do anything to acquire the drug. A foolish group of mortals, nothing more. They have been in Fargrave for a few years, always skirting the lines of the stricture and eluding the grasp. They are close friends and look out for one another. It makes them difficult to rein in. No, they have never been so bold before. Perhaps they grew bored of petty theft and being a nuisance. I could not say. Many of their transgressions had been too small for the grasp to interfere. Not this one. Indeed. They will find it much less forgiving than Fargrave. If they manage to survive the lightning and the tearing winds, they will need to contend with the wildlife. The Sever is not a gentle place. Be cautious when you venture there. The Grasp interprets the stricture, that which binds all Daedra and Fargrave. It keeps order by effectively turning the city into neutral ground. We are the law, to put it in your terms. We make sure citizens adhere to the strictures. Our influence does not extend beyond the dunes of Fargrave. The strictures are not concerned with the domain of the Prince of Destruction. They are now beyond my reach, but not yours. So many new faces in Fargrave. If you need work and can handle a weapon, we should talk. As a representative of House Hexos, Hexos. I assure you that this is all above board. Oh, I don't handle jobs. Think of me more as a scout for the organizations in the city who hire adventurers. Speak to Luna Burial or Vavelli Indivel. They hire mortals and Daedra for dangerous jobs on a daily basis. Well, if you want to work alone, see Luna Burial. Vavelli Indivel of the Sarathu Tong also provides jobs, but they're dangerous. You'll want a group to deal with them. Luna Burial has jobs that you can handle on your own, and Vavelli Indivel trades in tasks that require groups of adventurers. Regardless, yes, I'm a member of House Hexos. Since you made it to Fargrave, I'll let you in on a little secret. My house gave up its claims in Tamriel centuries ago for a lucrative position in the Celestial Palanquin. But even I'm not privy to all of it. Well, you don't get to be the foremost mortal family in a multi-dimensional Daedric city without being betrayed a few times over the centuries. We thrive because my ancestors were cautious. And that's still a family trait to the current day. Oh, I don't handle it. You're a wary one. Luna Burial represents the Gleaners. A group of... how do I put this? They're thieves. Oh, not the kind that robs from Fargrave. No, they retrieve items from elsewhere for interested parties in the city. They hire lone adventurers to help with that. Vavelli Indivel represents the Sarathu Tong, a syndicate of outcast mages who control a lot of trade in the city. Between their business dealings and research projects, they require groups to take on jobs too dangerous for Down some Mary, musta, hal, Yes, consider it a test. House Hexos serves as a bridge between Fargrave's mortals and Daedra. If you can't keep a minor secret, then we can't recommend you to other organizations. There's always opportunities in Fargrave for the ambitious and skilled. <laughs> Take a contract with the Sarathu Tong, and you won't have to fight everyone else for work. <laughs> Those fist-burning Dagonists left drugged prisoners outside Taupezu Azida, a Manticora's lair. Sinise Valno scried for them in the guild hall and recognized a few of the prisoners as Tong operatives. Here's a quick cordial. Give it to them. But don't just save the prisoners and come back for payment. No, this job isn't done until you kill Taupezu Azida and show those kin cursed cultists what happens when someone crosses the Sarathu Tong. 
The Serati tongue does not pay for time spent on a job. Dragging your feet will get you no favors. Mages who owe fealty to the great house. We transport wares and folks between Fargrave and Nern. In a trade city like Fargrave, you can see how useful that is. Most merchants prefer working with us over, oh, I don't know, a cult. Come on, Natong, mikä on niinku rikollisyndikaatti Tamrielissä, niin se on itse asiassa, se on kans halalu. Morak Tong on metsä, metsä, metsästäjien kilta, eli salamurhaajien kilta. Se ei ole halalu, kyllä, mutta... On ollut a, alun perin itse asiassa. Whomever builds the bridges sets the price of the crossing. Other groups in our position might not be as successful. But no one else has perfected transport across the plains. We're very specialized. Not everyone in the Tong spends their entire day working on the magics we've already discovered. The Tong supports artisans and scholars alike, who tend to have projects suited for different skill sets. That's where adventurers come in. Heard all that, and you don't want to work for the Tong. Figures. House Hexos is the largest group, but there's also the Gleaners of Arabis. You can talk to Hewlett Hexos or Luna Burial if you're interested. Hexos is reliable, and we've done enough business with the Gleaners to keep their thieving hands away from Tong property. But the Errant, that's what the others are called, are a selfish bunch. They're pactless, and that makes them deaf. We all serve different purposes. Hexos deals in goods across the plains. We're more magically minded. The Gleaners are useful for all covert operations. And the Errant, disorganized though they may be, give mortal structure. Fargraves, complex. Mostly higher ranking members will be the ones with jobs. Take Varus Dredain, for example. He's a high ranking mage with a number of dangerous experiments underway. But anyone can request the Tong assign an adventurer to their project. Me? If I ever needed to send an adventurer out, I'd just go myself. It wasn't too long ago when I was in your position, taking assignments from someone else. I learned that walking away from an enemy doesn't mean that you don't lose too. The plains are filled with the worst monsters and creatures the princes can think of. Don't take these challenges lightly. eye for spotting reliable adventurers in need of some extra work. Uh -huh. That's one of the things I'm known for. So, are you the sort of person I think you are? A reliable adventurer looking to make a bit of gold? Drops were made to our three designated sites in the shambles. Dahlia let us know about the drops, but she needs to lie low for a while. She's usually at Madame Wim's if you want to talk to her. Just make sure you're not followed. She's in hiding. We've had some trouble with fences lately. A thief got it into his head to steal from them, and now they're going after any gleaner they recognize. I need someone new to get these goods before someone else steals them. Are you in? You'll be paid. Oh, you get to head out on an assignment. We're a group of mortals and Daedra that do all sorts of things in Fargrave. We liberate items from across the plains for interested parties, explore hidden places, find treasure, vandalize. One thing I can say is that the work never bores me. Yes, but not just any sort of thieves and spies. We're extra plainer thieves and spies. <laughs> In addition to utilizing Fargrave's public portals, we also have an arrangement with the mages of the Sarathu Tong for when we need a special portal. They're a group of dark elf mages that were cast out of Morrowind for some offense or another against the tribunal. <laughs> they came to Fargrave and used their expertise at portal magic to supply House Halalu with trade goods from across the multiverse. Sometimes we need to go somewhere not readily connected to the portal plazas of Fargrave. Or we need to reach a specific location quickly and quietly. That's when we turn to the Sarathu mages. And when they require our expertise, we reciprocate. Some of our biggest clients are the movers and shakers of the city. 
and we tend to avoid pilfering in our own backyard. Plus, the grasp don't care. As long as we keep a low profile and don't make a spectacle, the Daedric authorities leave us alone. Me? Oh, I used to be a thief, but now I use my expertise to find talent and coordinate jobs for our clients. Besides, I love talking to adventurers. New arrivals and longtime Fargravians alike. Well, we usually have more work on hand than we have dedicated operatives. Besides, some missions involve dangers better suited to experienced adventurers instead of the specialized rogues who make up the core of the Gleaners. Well, it's not something you can just apply for. Invitation only, you understand. And that invitation has to come from one of the higher-ups, such as our founder, Pierron Desant. But the first step is to make a good impression. Ancient Daedric artifact to heal. How dare the very onsu interfere with their holy work? You there, come speak with me. <laughs> and ah, my dauntless companion from the clock ah. city, bounding from one mysterious realm to another. I see. This is for you. Down, down, must be a hunter in India and Charles. I found myself with your skills. I recently discovered that someone intends to auction off Mafala's chief artifact. The ebony blade. I hardly thought such a thing possible, but I leave nothing to chance. As soon as I began making inquiries, House Hexos cancelled the auction. I am the foremost authority on Daedric artifacts and the greatest mage of our era. So yes, I am quite confident they are trying to hide the weapon from me. A fool's errand. If you choose to assist me in finding the blade, I will pay you handsomely. Our first order of business <laughs> is investigating the auction house. It's just there, near the Nereid's fountain. Gather testimony, correspondence, anything you can. When you've discovered enough, meet me in the market near the Shambles North entrance. Ha! <laughs> Rest is a luxury the ambitious cannot afford. My business in the Clockwork City, while important, <laughs> accounts for only a fraction of my grand design. I have interests in realms across the Orbis, including this one. On my person? No. I know better than to wander the streets of Fargrave with an artifact like that jangling around in my pocket. But it is quite safe. I gave Seal my word I would keep it out of the dangerous hands. I always honor my agreements. It is an artifact of the dread teacher, Mephala. At first glance, it resembles a katana carved from obsidian. But I assure you, it is far more than a simple sword. It is the Lady's Malice in physical form. A life-devouring instrument of murder. Do I detect some suspicion in your voice? If we recover the Ebony Blade, I will do what I do with all the dangerous relics I acquire. Keep it safe. I assure you, there is no one better equipped to safeguard a terror like this. <laughs> Niin kuin se tekee Ebony Blade taas tehdä jokaisen sitä käyttäen berserkiksi. Oh, darling. How good of you to once again grace my fine establishment. And I see that my information proved useful. You found Lyrinth. Another customer satisfied and content. Now, what can Madam Wim do for you this time? While I have many, many talents, deciphering written codes concocted by fanatical mortals is not among them. Mm. Are you sure I can't interest you in something a little more luscious? No? Pity. Very well. I may know someone who can help you. You wound me. I thought we were becoming friends. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Talk to Gazmod, the Collector. His villa on the west side of town contains quite the accumulation of Dagonic paraphernalia. Something in his collection should help, provided you can catch his eye. You owe absolutely nothing, my darling. Lyrinth agreed to cover your cost for this bit of inside information. Isn't she a dear? Uh. Now, do tell Gazmod that we miss them here at the House of Whims. The place hasn't been the same without them. Oh, don't concern yourself with that, dearest one. 
I never ask for more than a client. Niin, sielu voi pyytää. There's no profit in that. When you have time, come back and let Madam Wim show you some of the wares that have made her the talk of oblivion. Uh -huh. Epäilyttävää. Go downstairs and rouse the anchorite. We'll want her with us when we talk to this collector. Meanwhile, I need to conclude our business here. Conclude our business? How I love the sound of that. It makes me on Twitter. I'm not here to play games with. <laughs> But games are some of my favorite activities, dear Laren. Come. Let me show you what the House of Whims has to offer. Uh huh. Mielenkiintoinen vaihto. Was Madam Wim helpful? Grab a drink and tell me all about it. I know I said I was going to help with the negotiations, but look, I don't want to talk. Some things are private, personal. You can't just walk up and demand I tell you my deepest, darkest secrets. Ugh, sorry. I agreed to talk about my name, my mask, everything. After you proved yourself, and you've certainly done that. When we first met, you asked about my name. Kaikki gave it to me. I just arrived in Fargrave, and everything before that exact moment was gone. All I had was this mask. I didn't know who I was or where I came from. Still don't. Just one of Madame Wim's little jokes means I'm a recluse. A hermit, living a life of seclusion behind a mask I can't remove. Sometimes, sometimes it feels like memories are stirring deep inside my mind. When that happens, I need a distraction. Because it feels like there's a war raging inside my skull. A war I can't win. Better to drink or, or whatever. Push them back down to stop the pain behind my eyes. That's my story. At least as much as I know. Oh. Now, tell me what Madame Moon said. I've heard of the Collector. As a villa on the west side of the city. Never met them personally. But I assume they're some sort of Daedra. Makes sense considering their influence and where they live. I'll meet you there. I'll finish this and meet you at the Collector's villa. It's on the west side, in a neighborhood that's strictly Daedric. So be careful and watch your step until I get there. Where else was I to go? I assumed I awoke in Fargrave for a reason. I stayed to find that reason. And to see if whoever left me here would one day return. Regardless, the city and its people quickly captured my heart. Especially the mortals. Another label assigned by Madame Wim. Stay in her orbit long enough and you'll collect a dozen appellations. I can't stand to see anyone go hungry or be taken advantage of. I try to help and don't ask anything in return. Wim sees that as a weakness. Bits and pieces, but when the memories stir, the pain kicks in. If I try to focus on them, actually make sense of them, the mask burns. It hurts me, like it doesn't want me to remember. Someday, I'll look into those blank spaces. But not today. Time to go, mortals. Oh, so it's nearly a stop. Gee. 
you damage our reputation. We'd rather feed this body to a flesh atronach. become a part of Gazmod's collection. Um, friend, why don't you talk to the collector? It approaches, it dares speak. Will it offer the mass to compensate for such insults? It invokes Madame Wim, wants what belongs to Gazmod and Gazmod alone. It is presumptuous leave our game i meant no insult by having my mortal speak to you collector we merely seek to borrow a dagonic codebreaker since you're clearly interested i'll allow you to examine my mask no the aerox must not leave the gallery but gazmod will peer at its mask this way mask wearer Come, little mortal. We must find the Aerox. Perhaps the gallery is beyond that door. This door must lead to the Collector's galleries. While Gazmod gazes upon the Anchorite's mask, let us step inside and locate the Aerox of which the Collector spoke. There is more to the Anchorite than meets the eye. She survived the hazards of Fargrave before we arrived. I suspect she will continue to do so long after we have departed. Let us not waste the opportunity she has afforded us. The Collector let slip that they have a codebreaker called the Aerox. We must find it. I have no idea what sort of relic an Aerox might be. But if it can help us decipher the encoded note, we must find it. Keep looking, mortal. Eh, tota, eh, tota. Tässä uusinta, uusinta lisäosaa juuri pelataan isoon. consists of relics. It dares enter our collection. Does it not know we see through many eyes? This collection is not at all what I imagined. Melkoinen keräilijä. No. The big family, you have to know how to scrap. Mekaaninen alitti. Karu Reaperi. Perhaps the Daganic relics lie beyond that door. This gallery contains but a single display. See what it is, mortal. 
I am Aerox the Mutilator. Release me from this cage and I will die. The Aerox the Mutilator is a daydrat of his word. At least currently. Release me and I will do anything in my power to aid your cause. <laughs> you do have a cause that needs aiding, don't you? Okay, teemme liittolaisen rotasta. Sweet freedom at long last! Aerox owes you for this kind indulgence. <laughs> Motivator. You have set Aerox free. Free! Aerox owes you a debt of honor. And Aerox will pay it, no matter how long it takes. <laughs> you have my word. But pray tell. Who do I owe this enormous debt of gratitude to? Question not this pitiable form, mortal. For within it beats the heart of the terror of the Deadlands, the Sunderer of the Seven Skies, and the Warrior of the Floating Wastes. I am Aerox the Mutilator! And yes, I currently occupy this <laughs> Tremore, joka on kirjoittu Daydratin uh, ruumiseen. Ei hyvää pelkää. Aerox I have already pledged to honor my debt to you. I will decipher every scroll in the tower of Lord Dagon's Viscount Scrivener, if that is what you desire. I swear my fealty to you, mortal master. My life and my skills are yours to command. With pleasure, mortal master. Did you hear what I said, mortal master? Vulcanos Nokfraz prepares to send the most fearsome Daedric troops in all the Deadlands to this Nexus city. The destruction will be glorious. It is addressed to some despicable cur named Sister Seldina. A weak-sounding mortal name if ever I heard one. <laughs> Why one of Maroon's Dagon's the most powerful warlords, ten, ten, Aerox, mind you, would deign to so. aid a weak-named mortal baffles me. Yes, right. <clears throat> Troops stand ready at Burning Gyre. Uh -huh. Send word when Fargrave's defenses fall, and the invasion will begin. Dremora blades will take the city, not your incarnates. Hmm. That is every word, mortal master, whose name is in the wind. Let us make haste, man. An excellent idea, mortal. Use the plaza of portals to reach the Deadlands. We'll rendezvous at Burning Gyre Keep. Sister Seldina. Twice now, you helped me stop her from it's harming okay, Fargrave and its people. Thanks for that. I'm not sure why Lyrinth chose us, or what she really cares about in all this. But as long as the cult threatens my city, I'll stand by you. Yeah, I heard. I may not remember who I am, or where I came from. But I found a purpose in Fargrave. That's what keeps me going. Protecting the city and its people. I won't rest until we stop Sister Seldina and the Order of the Waking Flame. Such violence! Oh, Master, you make me so proud! You dispatched that incarnate abomination with a ferocity worthy of Aerox the Mutilator! And did you see the look on Nakfras's face? Like a lava crab crawled up his nose and died! <laughs> we stopped Seldina's ritual and forced her to retreat to Burning Gyre Keep. There, instead of allowing her to summon Nakfras's promised army, we defeated her incarnate. Now she's on the run, back to her Riven Cataclyst. 
That device intrigues me. And do not forget that Nern is her ultimate target, little mortal. She plans to use Fargrave to sacrifice your realm to Dagon. But Seldina figured out a way to change the very nature of a Daedra. Truly change it. That bears further investigation. A question I must ponder. There are yeah, few places them. I can think of to hide such a device. None of them pleasant. And there are the blade bearers to consider. Why was their sword in the keep? For now, take this as a reward. That is the mortal custom, yes? Are you ready to resume our hunt for the Riven Cataclysm, little mortal? I assumed you'd want time to sample Madame Wim's delights, or explore the splendors of Fargrave. No? <laughs> Very well. Let us go before more incarnates are unleashed upon the city. You are not wrong in your summation, but we are not without avenues to explore. Remember the broken sword hilt you found at Burning Gyre Keep? It carries the mark of the Blade Bearers clan. The Blade Bearers are a Dromora clan who forged their own path. They have no allegiance to Mehrun's Dagon, so I find it curious that their crest was found on a broken sword in the keep. I want to determine their involvement. With your aid, of course. The Blade Bearers are nomads, but we should find them at a settlement called Wretched Spire. That's in the Sever region of the Deadlands. We must talk to their kinreeve, Rin Caius. I will meet you there. And bring Aerox. We may have a use for him. Rinkaius is a kinreeve of the Blade Bearers, a clan of nomadic Dromora who bow to no prince. Like the rest of his clan, he is fierce but values honor. He takes pride in his martial skills and the status of his kin. Mortals hold no interest for him. The Deadlands belong to Mehrun's Dagon, but places exist where his minions rarely go. Wretched Spire stands as a refuge of sorts, a settlement where Dromora without clans and escaped mortal slaves can eke out a meager existence, hence the name. As I said, the Blade Bearers are nomads who do not pledge allegiance to Dagon. As such, they roost in places that aren't under the Prince's direct control. Wretched Spire is one such location. Rinkaius' clan can usually be found there this cycle. He might be able to explain how his blade bearers came to be at Burning Gyre Keep. If Rinkaius knows more about the Waking Flame's activity in the Deadlands than we do, perhaps he can tell us where Sister Saldina and her device are hiding. Then either Rinkaius knows about the involvement of his kin, or he does not. If he knows, then he is an enemy, and we may learn something by questioning him. If he does not know, then he is a potential ally, and a powerful one. Friends? Hardly. That is a mortal concept. If I understand the idea, it implies affection, vulnerability. That you would attribute such an affiliation to Dramora is amusing. But I have known Rinkaius for a long time. We have never been at odds. You are unlikely to find any of Mehrun's Dagon servants in Wretched Spire, Master. Long ago, the Prince of Destruction commanded that no Daedra among his legions should look upon that place, or even speak of it. He was quite insistent. Never heard of him, but I do not trust him. I will watch him closely, Master, and sniff out his intentions. I have a keen sense of smell in this otherwise pathetic form. I prefer to be huge and powerful again, of course. But this form has some uses. I do not know. Lord Dagon wasn't in the habit of explaining his commandments. I heard the entire town was dropped into the Deadlands from someplace else. But I was never curious enough to investigate further. Sorry to have failed you, 
Mielenkiintoista. Parasta. These incarnates threaten not only Fargrave, but your world as well. Kyllä, kyllä. I just overheard one of the brass. Some mad scrids broke into Gasmod's collection. Free ponders these tidings and finds them absurd. Gasmod would suffer no such reproach. Doubt me if you like. But even Gasmod's eyes have blind spots. Three rolls his eyes. Watchers do not have. Ah, three realizes that you were speaking figuratively. Gasmod must take steps to repair his notoriety after recent events. Reimagines he will summarily obliterate all his sentinels for a start. Gasmod's got quite a few periodic curios in his collection. The bilious sensor, the toxic cruciform, the golden scab. If I could somehow recover any of these, how the blighted lord would <laughs> smile upon me. Oh, right. Peruitea palavotama. Our first order of business is investigating the auction house. It's just there, near the Nereid's fountain. Gather testimony. Correspondence, anything you can. When you've discovered enough, meet me in the market near the shambles' north entrance. It is an artifact of the dread teacher Mafala. while my associates collect the next items up for auction. Always a pleasure to see a fellow mortal. These Daedric types, well, they're all a bit creepy, eh? But <laughs> look at me, babbling away. Sorry, quick tongue, you know, comes with the profession. Here for the auction? Nothing but first-rate goods here. The Ebony Blade? Well, that's, uh, <clears throat> you know, not really my area of expertise. Daedric artifacts, I mean... Then again, there is a small errand that needs doing a personal matter, you see. You help me with that, and my memory might improve. Duff! Uh, there's no need for that. I was... I was just joking. <laughs> a couple of scoffins showed up not long ago, so they had to stow it away in the Hexos Gallery vault, in the shambles. Just don't tell anyone I told you, all right? Orgrim huutokaupassa. Sunder. Clever. That is so, yes. When a spell takes shape, the Magnus sigil will glow. Simple. Ah, timely as ever. What did you discover in the auction house? Make your way to the shambles. There's a Hexo storehouse near the center of the district. Check there first. You needn't worry. I'll be along soon enough. A fair warning, the shambles is a lawless slum, full of far worse things than mortal indigence. Prepare yourself. The size, mostly. Those Hexos Noirs are quite clever, by Imperial standards. They operate a number of warehouses in Fargrave, but only one of them is large enough to contain a vault of any appreciable size. I suppose we'll find out soon enough. Surprise. 
Do you have that key near to hand? Have a go at this. Well done. Now, let's see what they're hiding in there. There, the ebony blade. Mm. Claim it. As I suspected. Let's have a look at this so-called artifact, shall we? The fabled sword of leeches here within my grasp. Hmm. I have my doubts. May I? Eerily sharp, masterfully etched, and completely fake. This is a forgery. A brilliant one, I admit, but a forgery nonetheless. While I respect this forger's skill, I cannot abide a glut of fraudulent artifacts taking up my time and attention. No, no, they're traders, not artisans. This is Daedric precision. I know a spider kith, Skrix. He's a small-time scoundrel who deals in stolen goods, counterfeit soul gems, that sort of thing. He might be able to point us in the right direction. He frequents the Wishbone, a tavern in the Shambles northern alleys. Let's pay him a visit, shall we? He's a spider kith, which is to say he's a treacherous, deceitful sneak thief. Our personal history is contentious, full of double dealings and trickery. I've killed him more than once, but you know how these Daedra are. It rarely takes. <laughs> For the usual reasons, simple greed and fear of punishment. <laughs> Daedra may not die, but the process of reconstitution is not pleasant. I can also make business difficult for him. For Skrix, losing wealth may cause more pain than losing his life. Gotten? You were the Ash Elf fear? No, that Got only stop me. With you. Done better. Better with him. Better scuttle off. Stomp you otherwise. And peel you off the boot flat. Okay, it. Eli Tremora, jos kuolee, niin se joutuu pistämään itsensä kasaan, ja tää on vielä niinku... ...vähän vaiheessa tää kaveri. Ahaa, nyt mä tajusin. Ebony Blade, eh? That's the mistress's hot cutter. Somebody hammering out fakes? Clever. Got no idea where it comes from. Don't care. Tell fear he can find it himself. Threats, huh? With fear, it's always threats. Scritty elf with big head and tiny wits. Fine. We'll cast a signal line for it. Finding ritual. Can find anything with it. After this, fear pays you and you scuttle off. Final offer. Nothing. Secrets of the skein. You find out the secret, you die. Quiet. Alone in the dark. Still want to know how it works? Then you're stupid. Enough talk. Put the sword on the table. A ghostly spider. A bit garish for my taste, but then we can't all be squinty, desiccated skein spawn, can we? Before you go, a bauble I purchased before we set out for the shambles. Keep it near to hand. It may I pray you never have need to find out. Suffice it to say that it's insurance. Enough talk. Follow that spider. And don't take your eyes off Skrix. Not even for a moment. Surely you don't require a chaperone. Skrix, while clever, is hardly a match for a warrior of your skill. No, I'm quite certain you'll be fine without me. I have other lines of inquiry to explore. I won't be far behind, I assure you. Waiting on someone? Signal line won't stay fresh forever. Happy to stay here. Got better things to do than chase fake sword. Signal line will show you the way to the source. Just follow 
the spider link. Simple. Selostusta riittää. Jaha, jaha. Second ebony blade. It appears Scrix was as good as his word. So far. Examine the sword. Perhaps we can determine the nature of this artifice. Yeah. Out of magic, Scrix, but all too predictable. Quickly, assistant, use the sundial. What would you like to talk about? Light! What are you? <laughs> Toi tässä mukana vai ei? That appears to be that exemplary work. Hmm. From the looks of things, our web-brained friend here planned to sell several more forms. Okay. Now that we've apprehended him, the flow of counterfeit artifacts should grind to a halt. Now I provide you with the reward I promised, and we part company. Scrix and I have a great deal to discuss. I'd invite you to join us, but let's be honest. Carrying on a conversation with him is exhausting. You have my thanks, sir. Farewell. You know, despite his simple nature, Strix displays a rare gift for counterfeiting. I can think of countless applications <laughs> for such a skill. Alas. For all their power, the Daedra lack one vital trait. Skeleton keen varmuuskopio tai kopio tai väärennys ihan vaan niinku niitä varten, jotka saattaisi olla kiinnostuneita siitä. <tos> 